Hey kids, this is Aaron from the podcast that wouldn't die. And Kevin and I use Zencaster. You think you're better than us, that you're using something else? You're wrong. Zencaster's the place to be. Who are you to deny it? It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sound and up to 4K video with your guests. Go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use our code DIEHARD and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. We want you to have the same experiences we do for all our podcasting and content needs. It's time for you to share your story. Only a fool will give up a chance for a 30% discount. There's someone out there. No one knows his name. No one knows his face. Oh, no. But now, the most terrifying man in the city carries a badge. (laughs) Welcome to the latest episode of the podcast that wouldn't die. I'm your host, Kevin. With me, as always, is Aaron. Hi. This week on the podcast that wouldn't die, we discuss <laughs> the horror classic Maniac Cop. Dude, I'm totally surprised. This is just the same as all your other movies. Starring. To hear, to hear your nonsense. I thought this would be on your top 10 list. I'm still doing my intro, young oh, lady. I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention. Starring Tom Atkins, Bruce Campbell, Richard Roundtree. Uh, Laureen Landon and Robert Zedar. It's an all-star oh, cast. Laureen Landon's my favorite. Um, each week on the podcast, I wouldn't die. We discuss guilty pleasures and forgotten classics with a comedic twist of the horrid sci-fi genre. I messed it up. I messed it up. You get the idea. <laughs> you get the anyway. idea, don't you? Aaron, how's it going? What's the latest with you? Working for the weekends, friend. Everybody's working for the weekend. weekend. It's the first month I got paid, so then I spent all my money. So now I got to wait for the second month where I get paid. On meth? I mean, what'd you... On (laughs) meth. (laughs) On meth. Coffee's too expensive. (laughs) Meth is cheaper. Absolutely. 100%. No, I'm more of a mellow gal. No, you know, just nonsense. Flying Let me around. ask. I'm going to a music festival next weekend. You know, that's you do nothing if not go to music festivals all the live long day. It's Am true. I wrong? It's true. And halfway through it, I always mutter to myself, "F this shit. I'm tired and hot. I'm going home." And then I sit down for a little while, and then I'm like, "Bing!" Here and we then come. you're back. Twelve hours. Here we come. This time I'm going with uh, two of our sibs and their families, and we're apparently missing most of it, including Dog Star, which uh, I kind of wanted to see. Who are the bands other than Dog Star? The headliner is Pearl Jam, and it's Crowded House. It was supposed to be garbage, but they dumped and Devo. What a weird collection of musical. Yeah. T- and Dog Star, which you know is the Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves, band. yes, yes, yes. So I was there for some Keanu. And how much are the tickets? Two hundred or something. One. And I think I paid one eighty nine. Yeah, it's a three day festival. I just bought tickets for Friday. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I think I was Pearl Jam say. headlines again on Sunday or something. Something I, like that. I remember as somebody who was in high school. In the early 90s, when grunge was really taking off, right? I found Pearl Jam was the one band that I found reasonably palatable like of that of that era, because um, they seemed. I mean, their music seemed like real music. You know what well, I mean? It he's wasn't got like a great voice. You got, you got to give it to him. I was Pearl Jam over Nirvana. Not a hundred percent. I was. Uh, 100% not that I, I didn't care for Nirvana, but you know. I didn't really care for Nirvana. I thought it was a lot of, I mean, there were songs that I enjoyed more than others, but there were definitely, it was a lot of screech yeah. sometimes. Screech with from Saved by the Bell? It was screech. He helped out when he played the banjo. 
he did what he could. <laughs> he helped out when he could. Um, no, it's it's like, and and I I hesitate even to call like in my mind, grunge is Nirvana, whereas oh. Pearl Jam it seems less grungy to me. Well, it's it was the a, Seattle sound. You gotta have to have Seattle your sound all and you know absolutely. Um, Crowded House I enjoy, but yeah. I could probably only name two of their songs. No, well they have the one album. Yeah. But hopefully he's going to slip in and do some uh, split, split ends. ends. Yeah. There you go. But they're on a limited rotation. The beauty of the festival is they don't have three hours to torture us with new albums. Right. They got to get in there and they got to get out. That's the way to do it, man. That's the way it should be. Everybody should only be allowed to perform for like 30 minutes. And this no is matter in, where you go. <laughs> in my dream, in my dream. I sit down in like a theater, like like a movie theater with the reclinable seats. You hit the button and it, it heats your, your bum a little bit while you do it. A band comes out for 20, maybe 30 minutes, plays only their hits, and then they leave. And then the next band that I really enjoy comes and only does So you're not actually 30. moved by music or anything. I want it to wash over me. You know what I mean? That's the Hollywood Bowl. You're not supposed to stand up at the Hollywood Bowl. People do. I've told you the horror story of the Hollywood Bowl. I mean, we were sitting back on the wooden, yeah. on the wooden bleachers. But first of all, you don't go to the bleachers if you can't afford a seat. Then but stay the hell home. You stay the hell home and listen to it on Spotify. Well, that's always an option. Always an option. Anywho, give us your thirty-second synopsis of Maniac Cop. There's this cop who's like a maniac who just kills random people not for revenge really but because he's more of a maniac correct and then he kind of becomes like michael myers at some point so i'm pretty sure there's a maniac cop too i guess he was like a dirty harry who was like a good bad cop that everybody liked, but he, he did something bad and he went to prison and he died by having his face sliced up in, in the bathroom. And by the way, there was a lot of naked man wrestling. Um, Not a, a lot. Shift, <laughs> a, shift, a shift to the back and th- th- everybody liked him. So the corner at the prison just said, ah, he's close to death. I'll just send him home. And, as one does in prison. That's what does in prison. I'm sure uh, that was what happened to Manson. He's actually out here uh, playing the didgeridoo and <laughs> laughing and hopping around. Playing right the now. didgeridoo. Interesting. <laughs> as as one does. As now, one does. You had never heard of this movie. Is that correct? No. And you definitely had never seen it, right? I definitely never see it. I would say uh, of the... Uh, trauma movies that you have made me watch this is probably one of the better ones not a trauma it says trauma right at the beginning not a trauma then why does it say trauma i i think you're hallucinating not a trauma movie then why does it say it <laughs> i wrote it down because it said it i don't think it maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong I, the... I don't think it's a trauma movie but maybe you know what let's <laughs> i'll let you look it up while i continue to do my bs oh, um Lord. Growing up, I'd never heard of this movie. This movie's from the late 80s. Um, I, I'm trying to think if I saw like the box, at the blockbuster. That's a possibility. Um, I think within the last 10 years, I became very aware of Maniac Cop without having seen it. And the reason why is because it's got actors that I freaking love. It's got crazy it's Bruce true. Campbell in it. And we it's got, who we all love Bruce Campbell. And it's got Tom Atkins, who I've loved ever since Halloween 3 season of The Witch. So, and, and Night of the Creeps, obviously. Mm-hmm. It's like, that if you got those two great tastes that taste great together, this should be Lawrence of Arabia, right? It's the this Lawrence should, of Arabia of this kind. It is. It, it should be that that quality is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about it should be the Godfather. Right? Trauma Entertainment acquires James Glickenhouse North American Pictures catalog, including 
The Exterminator, Maniac Cop, Frankenhooker, Basket Case 2 and 3. Troma now owns it. That's, that's what it that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did yeah. And Troma Troma does that a lot. They did that for Blood Sucking Freaks. People think Blood Sucking Freaks is a Troma movie. It is not. They just purchased it and now control it. Is basically what happened. Does so that that's mean now it's a trauma. I I mean I guess they slapped their name on it when they distribute it, but dude, it's... because it it popped up when I watched this on Prime. Fair. So I I think I saw this for the first time ever within the last couple of years, maybe two or three years ago, and I remember being blinded by my infatuation for Bruce Campbell and Tom Atkins where I I'm just like Bruce Campbell. He's like a tiny little baby here. He's fresh as a daisy. He's fresh as a daisy. This he is, is an attractive man. Well, he's like ripped. Yeah. Well, he's like, like shirtless he's skinny ripped. He's not Dave Batista. No, you're right. He's cut. He's yes. cut where it's like, literally he's shirtless. You're like, he's got like pecs and muscle. I'm like, what is happening? Bruce Campbell. And pale as a ghost from, from the Oregon fog. And and the thing that hits you like a bucket of cold water is how understated his performance is. This isn't crazy Bruce Campbell that we love. No. This is I'm trying to be an actor Bruce Campbell. 100%. And it's not winking in front of the, you know, camera. Right. It's not No mugging. Right. Yes. Now, they say he's talked about how he did this movie literally only for the money where he was like, he thought the script was lousy. So you could argue he's kind of mailing in his performance. But it's actually pretty good. He's not He's not bad in it. He's not bad in it. Um, but it, it's kind of a wasted like thing to have him in this movie. And what's funny is you thought they must have had sequels. They had two sequels aye, to this aye, movie. Aye. Bruce Campbell was con contractually obligated to appear in the second one, and he's killed in the first 10 minutes. Spoiler alert. <laughs> was that part Man. of the contract, too? He was like, he did not want to be in it. He didn't want to be in this one. Then why'd you sign up, brother? That's it. Because you got to pay cry. the bills. Exactly. So the, you committed, don't cry about it. Well, because this is the time, if I'm not totally mistaken, this is after the original Evil Dead, obviously, but this is before Evil Dead 2. This was him still trying to like kind of scraping and scrounging for acting parts. Right. Very much. Which frankly is not that different from the rest of his career, if I'm being honest. Right. Womp womp. Sad situation. Tom Atkins had been in a bunch of stuff at this point. So I don't know why he's in it. Although it's, it's interesting. When he dies, I was shocked. When he's killed like three quarters of the way. Spoiler alert. He's killed three quarters of the way through the movie. I was like, whoa, what's happening? What's going on here? So. Yeah, I mean, in the end, Maniac Cop kills everyone, including his girlfriend. He does. Well, yes. He, the, Bruce Campbell's girlfriend and Bruce Campbell survive. Uh, and they appear in the second one. Bruce Campbell's dead in the first five minutes. And Robert Davi is now the main character, the main protagonist of the movies going forward after that. So there you go. Do you know who Robert Davi is? No. Robert Davi was is a maniac famously, cop. No. Robert Davi is famously one of the Fratellis in the Goonies. He oh, is which the one, one? The pockmarked face one who's not Joe Pantoliano. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you said, but who's not Joe Pantoliano? <laughs> the other one who sings opera because he's actually an opera singer in real life in addition to being an actor. So there you go. Robert Davi. All right. Good times. Why don't we jump right into Maniac Cop? I, I said. I got Maniac a lot of notes. I got a me. lot of notes. Got a lot of notes. Hit me. Except for the rape victim getting killed at the very beginning. Yes. You're like, oh, oh a, a girl's getting raped by, by, you know, hoodlums. Attempted rape. Attempted, Attempted rape. rape. She gets away. Uh, and, and the maniac cop kills her. I disagree with that. But after that. You're okay with it. 
uh, after that, I'm okay with that. It's all the classic crap. You're in the you're in the morgue investigating the murders. All the guys in the morgue are creepy as f. Uh, they're all like, <laughs> I, I enjoy that. Well, I, the one the one mortician we meet who was talking about, look, her head's all wobbly. That was, that was, he was, I recognized him instantly. He was the head Nazi and surf Nazis must die. Oh my so God. Go. I, I can't even believe you can remember that movie because I have scrubbed it from my that's, memory. That's a good move. That is a good move. Dude, sometimes but, having a shite memory is, is a blessing. One thing that you make a good point is that really there were two occasions three occasions where the maniac cop kills innocent people for no reason. And it kind of doesn't make sense for who the maniac cop is supposed to be. When we discover who he was, it makes zero sense that he's murdering the innocent mugging victim. And then there's like a traffic stop violation or something that he murders those people. And then he doesn't seem to murder any, well, I guess he murders Bruce Campbell's wife for no reason. Well, there's a reason for that, which makes no sense. Anyway, and right. okay, there's a lot that doesn't make sense, yes. but you you gotta just roll with that. You do. You do. Uh, one of the better scenes is before early on. There's like a lovers' lane situation where they uh, kill the husband, and I I was like, is this movie supposed to be three D? Because then they shove him through the glass. Blood is sprayed everywhere, and she's just dri- it drives off. Her boyfriend flops off, it and it was it was clear somebody had like a squirt gun. It was squirting. <laughs> it was absolutely. <laughs> it was like what? The- this movie is fairly funny. I thought. Um, <laughs> I beg to differ. Well, the problem the problem is. Okay, let's let's rewind a little bit. I mean, it's it's nonsense, but all the stuff that's going on is ridiculous. I thought it was kind of funny Th- that scene where the, <laughs> the squirt gun, <laughs> squirt gun blood, just blood pouring everywhere. I was like, oh lord. So Matt Cordell, it, it is basically like Dirty Harry. Like they talk about, he's a he's a, was a tough cop who shot first and you know asked questions later, and evidently. I don't know. The public was getting pissed off with him just gunning down people in the street. I don't it's know a full on dirty, hairy situation. It is. He's, he's a dirty, hairy cop. So he says that the, the police commissioner and the mayor kind of turn on him and he gets sent to prison because of being a, a, a ruthless murderer, I guess. Is the <laughs> idea. Something. And he, they could have had him in kind of, what was it, solitary confinement or protective something like custody? Protective custody, and but he didn't want it because he didn't want to appear afraid. So he was just in general pop with all the all the criminals that he had had abused over the years, and he gets killed. But and this is the question to you, Aaron: Is he alive, maniac cop, or is he kind of a ghostly, like a like a Michael Myers type? What do you think the situation is? Because they kept saying that he survived. But then things happen. Like he gets shot multiple times and seemingly just sloughs it off. Yeah, none of this is explained. So he wasn't dead. And so they backed up the hearse or dropped him off at his girlfriend's house. Correct. And then what? She doesn't seem like she has mystic powers. He's getting shot a thousand times. He's Michael Mars. He just keeps popping back up, popping back up. Shotgun, it doesn't matter. Yes. Totally unexplained. Right. He doesn't seem to speak. He was unable to speak to his girlfriend. He let her touch his hand. But how did she know where to find him? We don't know, because obviously he's not picking up a payphone. And how does he have clean clothes? These are all important questions. He's wearing these perfect white gloves like he's in dress uniform. He is. You're right. I mean, it would have been so easy to be like, you know, uh, there was some voodoo priestess or some shit. It. It could be nonsense. He dumped into toxic waste. It takes two seconds to come up with some kind of bullshit to explain why he's an unstoppable killing machine, and they don't even give it an ounce of thought. 
right? They, they, their only thing, uh, explanation is now he hates everything he once loved. Because they were like, oh, look out at St. Patrick's Day. He used to love that. Oh, no. <laughs> he's on the warpath. He's right. on the warpath, but there's no explanation how he's an X-Men now. He, now they say he's out for revenge. Against Ag the against random people on the street. Right. The, that's the thing. It, it, look, when they said he had brain damage or something uh, as because of his wounds, and now he just murders everybody. But he's still very much like single minded in purpose because he he wipes out the police captain and the police commissioner in about <laughs> seven seconds. Right? They close the door. They're talking to each other. Then suddenly he's there. Stab, stab, stab. They're gone. There goes there goes Shaft. He yes. kills John Shaft in about <laughs> six seconds. So he kills everybody. He killed an entire police uh, battalion, office, whatever policemen call their entire yes. office. Off camera stealth, yes. so nobody could hear that everybody's dead and hanging from the ceiling. Correct. Correct. Now there was a there was a bizarre subplot where the supernatural maniac cop is trying to frame Bruce Campbell. For, for what murder. reason? He, unclear. 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 Now, they say the, the eyewitnesses, like the, the two Puerto Rican muggers who are arrested, say a cop did it. A cop did it. A big guy. Is Bruce Campbell that big? Maybe he is, and I just don't know it. Well, he was taller than his wife. I don't know. Oh, but he was standing. I mean, he's probably taller than Richard Roundtree. I don't know. Could be because there's that there's that other subplot where it's an extended scene of Bruce Campbell with his wife, who who seems like she's crazy. Yeah, like she seems like she's like on pills or something. Like she's just shaky and twitchy. And honey, stay home. You need to stay home with me. It's like, a, but I'm on the duty roster. But she's <laughs> set up. This is a long draw setup for no reason because Maniac Cop's wife is calling her, Correct. trying to make her crazy. Because Bruce and yet Campbell's she's the one affair. who quit marriage. Yeah, she's the one who quit marriage and uh, marriage, marriage encounter. encounter. I was just marriage, <laughs> marriage encounter. encounter. Yeah, you gave up the therapy. I uh -huh. was willing to go and pay for it. Right. So but he's now, now that you aren't, I'm going to go stick my dick places. Bruce Campbell's six foot one. So he's probably six. He, he's a Hollywood 5'10". He's a Hollywood 5'10", if I ever see it. Interesting. So, which is, he like gets into full uniform and then walks a block and a half to the seedy motel. Where she is doing the same thing. His little rendezvous, who looks about 20 years older than him with her weird white wig. She does. She looked, she looked a little long in the tooth. I don't know what the story was. That's Lorene Landon, who'd been, who's been in things. But yeah. I'm just like, what? It's like Karen Black or somebody, or it's like a kind of. I a wish it was Karen Black. Wouldn't that that would have been great? That would have been a thing. His <laughs> wife gets a creepy call saying, "Well, the the call is saying your husband's the killer. Your husband's the killer," which makes her go and follow her husband to see if he is in fact the killer. But no, he's just shacking up with another cop in a CD motel room. Right. And then the wife is murdered by the maniac cop to set up the frame job. But are you are you a mindless killer or are you you're the people think you're dead. You don't have to frame anybody. Doesn't make the whole framing thing makes no sense. Go ahead. Yeah. It it only makes sense if Bruce Campbell was somehow involved with his arrest. But they don't ever say that. No. And she's setting it up with her boyfriend, husband, maniac, who doesn't seem to speak words. So how do they, how do you set up a plan with, with Lurch, who doesn't speak? Well, she meets him from time to time on the docks. So, but the question remains, do they just meet every night at a certain time? On and the hold, hand, and hold, hold hands hand. through the, the dirty glove. Well, that, that's, <laughs> look, he gets, he, so he's stabbed to death. And evidently, they also stabbed his hand. They're like, we're getting every nook and cranny. I didn't see any the hand stabbing. He got stuck in the back, and then they cut up his face so he wouldn't be pretty. But I saw pictures of the actor. He wasn't that pretty. Well, he has he has a condition. He he was in Tango and Cash, 
where he's not the maniac cop and you can see him. He has, it's called cherubism where it's like, it causes your jaw to be kind of huge yes. for some reason. It's a, it's a, it's a medical condition. So that's that's his thing. But he has a rocket body because the person who's running around naked is is pretty buff. He is. He was buff. Um, this movie, this movie. So Tom Atkins is the lieutenant on the force who's convinced that it is, in fact, a cop who's committing the murders. And that if it's not an active duty police officer, then somebody on the force is giving information to the maniac cop. Okay, that was based on nothing, and yet it was true. And yet it was true. <laughs> <laughs> well, because it was... For the frame job to work, they had to know that Bruce Campbell was having an affair with Teresa, I think, who was another cop. Because Bruce didn't tell anybody because obviously he's having an affair. And the girl he's having the affair with only told... The one the person <laughs> she told yeah. one person, Peg Leg Polly, Peg Leg Polly, who worked in the records office. You know her. She's got the leg brace and the crutch. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, and she co- she was Cosmo Kramer's mother on Seinfeld. She what? She's been in something before, right? Is that all it was? So maybe a cop directly to Seinfeld. I, I was digging deep on her. She was supposed to replace uh, Marilyn Monroe as the It Girl back in her day. Well, that that's not the woman I saw in this film. No, no, no. But uh, yeah, she she had done. She was gorgeous back in her day. Okay, well now I have to look. Yes. Was Laureen Landon, the blonde woman, also gorgeous back in her day? I did not look her up. <laughs> I got their names confused. But as soon as I saw Peg Lake Polly, I'm like, that's Cosmo Kramer's mom. Boom! Well, I knew immediately. They, they establish that she was the maniac cop's girlfriend from before when he was just the regular man. He was always a maniac cop, evidently, but before he was but supernatural. But there, there are degrees to this mania. <laughs> there was degrees to these mania. She was his girlfriend, and when he was sent up the river, she tossed her ass out the window because she was so distraught, and that's why she has a jimmy leg ever since. That's right. My love. But why didn't she just toss herself out again? Now that she's got the, it's like uh it's like some kind of leg brace from eighteen hundred that she has to drag it along like Igor. It was, <laughs> it, it was a great. Shoe that Olga had in Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> it was like a step and then a a metal drag clump clump. Absolutely. Hundred percent. It was now, fantastic. No, she's not walking a beat, but she's working in records, which makes sense. But I guess they still give you a gun. If you're a cop, you have a gun. I guess Even if you're a cop, you're a cop. If you're a cop, you're a cop all the way. How about the part where everyone knows there's a maniac cop, so everybody who gets pulled over then shoots the officer that's pulled them over? <laughs> that, was, that was the best. They're thing running out of people. There was an in- <laughs> investigative journalist. Uh, who, who did a, a news story where she just is interviewing randos off the street who are just like, cops have been beating up on me since way back when. What's different? <laughs> Basically. And that was, yes, an old an old woman that's pulled over in her Lincoln Continental. And <laughs> she sees the cop coming and reaches into the glove compartment and just blows him away. It's like some tw- some rookie. First day on the force gets gets a thirty eight between the eyes. Very upsetting. Very upsetting. Uh, yeah. And I she guess was like, but then she was like yelling something. He was gonna kill me. <laughs> oh, it's yes. a little turnabout for sure. <laughs> that was a funny moment, actually. Well, I mean, but that's the thing. It's like this movie is never scary. No, and honestly. The, the whole maniac cop shtick is not that good. Like he doesn't ever handcuff anybody like brutally, like murder somebody with handcuffs. He like, cause he's got his nightstick, but he's got a knife hidden in the nightstick that he stabs right. people with, which I don't believe is standard operating equipment for cops. I thought it was like with those walking sticks that have the, the, the blade inside. Like in Victorian England. Is yes. what you're <laughs> this is no. like Victorian uh, Popo. Pretty much. Because he never, he has a gun, but he doesn't shoot anybody. Right? No. no. 
Yeah. And he's it, and he's impervious to bullets for no apparent reason. Right. He goes to murder Teresa, who's undercover as a hooker. Right. And she's evidently the nicest undercover uh, prostitute in the world because a dude pulls over and is clearly soliciting. And he's like, well, and she asks some leading question. He goes, wait a minute, are you a cop? She's like, you got me. He's like, okay, I guess I'll go home with my family. He's like, yeah, that's a good idea. Do you catch no one? I mean, don't you have to kind of sell it that you're a, you're a hooker? Or Wasn't that something? like a thing in all the old movies? Oh, if you ask a cop, if they're a cop, they're not allowed to lie to you. No, cops can lie all the time. They do it all the time. They cops do it can all- lie. In other countries, they cannot. Right. But in America, watch out, you're, uh, people coming over here to commit a crime, uh, they can lie. Well, they'll get you in the interrogation room and just say, hey, we got video of you committing the crime. And your friends all confess. <laughs> all They're saying friends- it's your idea. <laughs> they do that all the time. Every Absolutely. time. Absolutely. There this is a- why we have so many false confessions, I'm sure. People, they just grind you down until you're like, okay, yeah. I killed my whole family, even though I was out of town. <laughs> well, I, I murdered them all with an axe, absolutely, even though I have no arms or legs. <laughs> I have no arms or legs, but I willed it with my psychic powers. I used my psychic powers. <laughs> you know, they, they talk about, this is not particularly funny, but they talk about how people are, you know, poor people are arrested all the time for, you know, kind of things that aren't that big of a deal. And or they they have, round up the usual suspects. Well, they have to plead down to get out of jail so they don't lose their jobs. Right. So they have to plead guilty to a lesser charge, even though they're innocent. Right. Just so they can keep their job and not be evicted and, you know, all sorts of things. That's well, I think that's why we got rid of uh, bail in California. Because if you can afford to get out, you're out. If you're poor and you're working, you know, hands and mouth, right. then you're in jail. Then you're screwed. 100%. We're, we're not all Diddy where we can just bounce. <laughs> we just bounce to Epstein Island after, <laughs> exactly. after sexually assaulting hundreds, thousands. Oh my God. Sweet Jesus. This I is think it's going to be the end of, this is going to be the end of Diddy. That's for <laughs> Thank sure. Thank goodness. Uh, I wrote this down. Please. You want to see the pretty pictures? <laughs> What's that from? I don't know. I was hoping you'd remember. <laughs> I do. Wait a minute. Because there's a scene where they talk to uh, the the mortician at the jail. And he's the one who explains how it was a shame what they did to that Cordell guy. So when I got one blip on the EKG, I, I released him on his own recognizance. Is exactly. that how it works? Yeah, Is that's that- how it works. Good Lord. <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. What? Anything else? I'm, I'm Tap City, baby. Uh, how's he killing with a log in his chest? At one point, he's driving a car and a whole boat sail skewers him. And he's Correct. cool. He's cool. He's the maniac cop. Well, the, he's remember. the maniac cop for no reason. He's the Michael last, Myers. The last 30 minutes of this movie is a car chase that occurs. Because they, they've they captured Bruce Campbell, who escaped after the maniac cop went on a, on a, a murder spree in the police right. station. They, have, they finally arrest him. They toss him back in the paddy wagon. And the maniac cop appears, murders all those people. Wait a minute. I thought you were trying to do a frame job. No? Not anymore? Murders all those people. Drives away in the paddy wagon with Bruce Campbell in the back. Right. Swerving. Lorene Landon is chasing in a police car. They stop the car, right? He, the maniac cop pulls into some warehouse on the dock because now he's going to murder Bruce Campbell for real. Right. And call it what? Suicide? For, right? It's for called him. Who the Hell Knows and for what reason we also don't know. We don't know. Bruce Campbell was not in on the death, right? At nope. least in Ninja 3 The Domination, it made sense why the ninja the do- was the killing everybody. <laughs> the Dominatrix. So then Lorene Landon appears, shoots the maniac cop. He's fine. He gets into the paddy wagon again to drive away. (laughs) Bruce Campbell runs up and is now attacking the maniac cop from the window (laughs) for some reason. (laughs) Then he gets impaled. They go off the pier. And this seemed like 
a dangerous stunt. Like I thought, I thought the stunt man was dead meat because they show <laughs> they show the truck go off like right like Dukes of Hazard or something goes off a ramp into the Hudson wherever it is out of the East River and the stunt man like flops off. I could have sworn that it went truck. under the truck. It yes. went, he went under the truck, right? I thought he was dead meat. I, I wasn't was crushed. I Go think ahead. he was a dummy, but if you do not touch anything, Maniac Cop 2 starts, it's that same scene, but this time the body goes in a different direction. It goes straight down. Are you lying? Are you Instead of about? under. No, no. I, I was on my phone and I look up. I'm like, oh, did it not end? I th and, and I see that, and I realize that's the intro to Maniac Cop Maniac 2. Maniac Cop 2, which and I mean, enjoy as much. Well. <laughs> right. Bruce Campbell is now exonerated. Why? For what reason? Who knows? All the witnesses are dead, except for you and your girlfriend who've been saying you were innocent the whole time and no one gave a shit. So I don't know so why. <laughs> So is Bruce Campbell also immortal or what? Well, apparently not if he gets killed the very next episode. I have to admit, I fell asleep three times watching it. You so. that, that, that even even a thing because you fall asleep now for every one of these. Have you considered not watching A in bed at midnight in the dark? Have you considered that? Or like at a human time? Watch I, it while you're at work. I am a loving husband and father. <laughs> who spends time with his family and the moment they leave the room after dinner, it is maniac cop time. <laughs> and then my natural narcolepsy kicks in. I'm sad to say you're, so, you're like dad. You're just like dad. It's embarrassing. <sighs> it is goddamn embarrassing. <laughs> anyway, what else you got? Anything else? I got nothing else. Let's roll. Let's roll. Let's go behind the scenes. Shall we? Maniac cop. Both. Bruce Campbell and Robert Zedar have the nickname The Chin. How's that for a fact? I remember uh, Zedar from uh, his younger days, but I couldn't remember what it was. But I totally have seen him in other stuff. As soon as I saw his, because he looked familiar, but then when I saw his younger picture, I'm like, oh yeah. Robert Zedar. The first time I saw him was in Tango and Cash. And recently I saw him in the <laughs> in the uh, movie Samurai Cop. So you have that to look forward to. Um, no, I do not. No, you do not. <laughs> three cameras were used to shoot the St. Patrick's Day parade before the production began. Wow. Sam Raimi shot some of this footage, which was shown to investors to secure the money to complete the film. Ted so, Raimi's in this too somewhere. Sam Raimi is in this. He is the uh, reporter at the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Oh, is he? Oh, my God. Sam Raimi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Usually if Sam's in it, Ted's in it, too. Yeah, but th this isn't a Sam Raimi movie. He was just helping out his buddy Bruce Campbell, evidently. All right. The coroner was played by the director's real-life doctor, which explains his acting. <laughs> that reminds me of Ed Wood. Yep. Although the film is set in New York, it was only shot there for three days, which explains why there are multiple scenes of palm trees during the car chase. <laughs> are there not palm trees in New York? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Shockingly not. Oh. Uh, we talked about this. Bruce Campbell admits that he only did the film because he needed work. He also admitted that he believed the film wasn't any good. Well, he was wrong. Oh, very sad. Um, let's see. Given the theatrical release in the U S at grindhouse theaters and midnight movie showings. Um, it, uh, did not recoup its costs until the video rights sales shot through the roof. There you go. There you go. For sure. This is a perfect video movie. And that ultimately led to sue to two sequels being made exclusively for the video home video market. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Porn and, and uh, maniac cop. That'll do it every time. Despite receiving top billing and being the film's protagonist, Tom Atkins is surprisingly killed two thirds of the way through the film. <laughs> it's true. Uh, body count. I, I, I want to say freakishly, the only nudity is uh, men in the prison yep. scene. But you don't. <laughs> you do not see any dingle dangle dingle. 
Um, just rumpuses. May, maybe a little ass. No, maybe. no, you saw you saw some ass. You saw a full cheek. I it saw was basically a, slumber party massacre. Is it, that was slumber, it was the double cheek for it sure. Was, it was cracking all. <laughs> what do you think the body count for this movie was? Twenty. Close nineteen. All right, not bad at all. Let's look at the. I'm cast a savant. Crew, shall we? <laughs> yes. Director William Lustig. Uh, you know him from such films as <laughs> he did. Evidently, most of his credits here are for an act, for acting. So let me look. Let me look for director. Whop, whop. Uh, he is famous for directing Maniac in 1980 vigilante in 1982 i'm hearing a theme uh relentless in 1989 <laughs> that was relentless was actually with uh, uh jed nelson where he was an evil serial killer so there you go you have that to look forward to um written by larry cohen Is i didn't see of, that uh, did you know what he's, he's famous for King of Schlock, but I cannot. It's something we we watched recently. Absolutely. Uh, 1976, he wrote God Told Me To. No. 1974, It's Alive! Yeah! 1978, It Lives Again. Yes. Also, Better than It's Alive. At least funnier. Yes, well, that's, that. that's something. Uh, also... Uh, in 1982, Qu- Q, the Winged Serpent. I did see that. And 1985, The Stuff. Boom. Can't get enough of that stuff. That's clearly the can't apex. Can't get enough of the stuff. I love that stuff. Ain't no <laughs> lie. Uh, cast. Tom Atkins played Lieutenant Frank McRae. You know him from Halloween 3, Season of the Witch in 1982. Night of the Creeps in 1986. Yep. The Fog in 1980. Oh, yeah. And shockingly enough, the remake of My Bloody Valentine in 2009. <laughs> uh, Bruce Campbell played Officer Jack Forrest. You know him from such things as Bubba Hotep. <laughs> Which is marginal, let's be clear. Uh, Army of Darkness in 1992. A classic. The Evil Dead in 1981. That classic. 30 episodes of Ash versus Evil Dead. Marginal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Laureen Landon played Teresa Mallory, Officer Teresa Mallory. You know her from such things as The Devil's Left Hand in 2023. Does She's the devil have a right stuff. hand? Yeah. She, Bless her. Bless uh, her. She was, in, she was Testa in Airplane 2, the sequel. In 1982. I did not see that. Armed Response in 1986. I missed that. I, the jury in 1982. With Ar- Armando Sante? Well, I don't know. Is he in that? I, the yes. jury. Yes. That's Let's what I think. That... Uh, Armando Sante. Uh, Very good. Boom. Barbara Carrera. Alan That's Kane, a real Paul movie. Savino. Yeah. Real movie. He had his moment. He had his moment. Uh, let's see who else is in this cast. We've Armando got... Sante, not French. No, he's not. Richard Roundtree played Commissioner Pike. You know him from such things as Shaft in 1971, a classic. Uh, uh, I've never seen it. Oh, you son of a gun. He was in Brick in 2005. I'm unfamiliar. Unfamiliar. He was in Speed Racer in 2008. Go Speed Racer. And he was in George of the Jungle in 1997 with uh, Brendan Fraser. Who thought that was a good idea? I always say I loved Shaft, but the one you really have to see is Shaft's Big Score. That was the second Shaft movie. It was even better, in my opinion. All right. William Smith played Captain Ripley. This guy's been in a a shit ton of stuff. Uh, He was in Any Which Way You Can in 1980. He was Falcon Eddie. In Rich Man, Poor Man in 1976, three episodes. If you remember yeah, that. I didn't I didn't see that, but I remember that was a thing. He was Strenken. <laughs> I'm gonna mess up his name. Strelnikov in 1984's Red Dawn. He was, I did see that, but I have no memory of it. it he was, was a long in time ago. 56 episodes of Laredo 
uh, from 65 to 67. Unfamiliar. Uh, it was a Western from way back. It when. seems. It seems so. <laughs> <laughs> he was. He he was in a shit ton. I mean, his his IMDb goes on and on and on. He was unfortunately series, not with Apes. anything I've seen. He was in Black Samson. He was in not the Rockford Files, Six Million I, Dollar Man. Oh Lord! Invasion the, of the Bee Girls in 1973. We have never seen that. I want to say. I want to point that out. Robert Zedar played Matt Cordell, the titular maniac cop. You know him from such things as Tango and Cash, 1989. Wait, Matt Cordell is the name of the of his character. Correct. His real name is Robert Zedar. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were saying that Matt Cordell was in the following films. <laughs> no, Robert Zedar played. They don't call him Matt Cordell or... In, in I am the they call him called, Maniac. The movie's Maniac Cop, but his character's name in the IMDb is Matt Cordell. Yes. So All there right, you go. Sorry. He pl- it's okay. He played Yamashita in 1991 Samurai Cop. There you go. He was in Untitled Horror Comedy in 2009. Untitled Unfamiliar. Horror Comedy. He was in <laughs> Maniac Cop 3. Badge of Silence, which I have not seen and I'm not rushing out to see. Uh, let's see. Sheree North played Sally Noland. That was Maniac Cop's girlfriend. Right. Um, you know her from such things as Breakout in 1975, uh, Lawman in 1971, the Shootist in 1976. That was a real thing. And Charlie Varick in 1973. That was Walter also Matthau. Real. That was yeah. real. That was real. And, of course, as I said, Cosmo's mother in a couple of episodes of Seinfeld. Okay. There you go. She was the bathroom. She was a bathroom attendant. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at the rating, shall we? Let's do that. Maniac Cop currently has 56% on Rotten Tomatoes. You know what the audience gave it? 67. 41. No, that can't be right. (laughs) There's only four top critics. Uh, Let's take a look. Uh, Noel Murray of the AV Club says... It's too often a routine 80s genre piece, straight down to the synthesizer score, overlit night scenes, and bandana sporting street punks. B minus. That sounds like a positive review to me, actually. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. B (laughs) minus. Nick Shager of Lessons of Darkness says, a sturdy slasher flick that laces its splattery slags with some anti-establishment undertones. B. So there you go. What is your rating for Maniac Cop, Aaron? Maniac Cop is a wacky, makes no sense, uh, bizarre acting choices, comedy festival. Oh, shit. I think you need to have at least three out of five drinks... (laughs) <laughs> to truly savor this whack a do. Okay. Aaron says, check it out. So three out of five. That's three out of five. That's three respectable. out of five. It's just so bizarre. Makes no sense. I found it entertaining and amusing. Here, here are my complaints. Bruce Campbell is not the Bruce Campbell you're hoping for. In this. Right. He's fine. He's, he's acting. But it's not the crazy ash that we're looking for, honestly. So that kind of that kind of knocks it down a little bit. Tom Atkins is is good. He's doing his Tom Atkins thing. Sadly, there's there's no nudity. There's no uh, you know him having sex in the CD motel. Here's my ass with like Peg Leg Polly. That could have been a little bit of skin there. Why not? He'd be up Why for not? it. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. He's fine. He doesn't deliver any of his Night of the Creeps. Like one-liners, like you would hope. Um, really, the comedy comes from the, the unintentional variety, and <laughs> like, like you said, the the 
The plot makes absolutely no GD sense. Nothing's explained. Nothing's explained. It's, <laughs> it's a just sad, a guess. It's a sad, sad situation. I, just, I honestly don't think it's funny enough to carry it. So I'm going to give it 2.5. 2.5 maniac. You're, cops. you're right. <laughs> 2, 2.5 maniac cops. That's right. <laughs> That's all it is. Oh, sweet Jesus. Yeah. The moment you lose Bruce Campbell and Tom Atkins, there's no reason to even come to the theater for part two. <laughs> so, I'm out. I'm out. So there you have it. Any last thoughts on maniac cop? I just think they should have pushed it a little bit further. That wife should have been a little crazier. Everybody should have just been a little bit more. Absolutely. But otherwise, I, I wasn't bored. I was like, what the fuck? What? <laughs> <laughs> it is so bizarre. You know, Black Lives Matter, Maniac Cop. That's all I'm going to say. Although only one African-American is murdered, it's Richard Roundtree. So I think he only kills white people in the course of this movie other than Richard Roundtree. So is that good or bad? Is that progress? I don't know. Who can say? I think it's a political film. It, they were discussing about the police always beating on them. So <laughs> now true. they get it's what's really, coming to them. Th- th- see, it was ahead of its time. It was making political statements. Absolutely. Not that anyone should hurt anybody. That's no one should be saying. hurt by anybody. No, no, we're not saying that. But I'm just saying they might have been a little... Head of time with their message. It's I tell my children, message. hands are for loving. Hands, hands are, for, are loving. for loving. I used to say with that consent. Class. With consent. <laughs> Don't. Try. Soft hands. Soft touch. Soft, <laughs> Soft anyway, kitty. Warm kitty. Little ball of fur. <laughs> Okay, moving on. So thank you very much. Go to our pages across social media. We're on Facebook, X, Blue Sky, Threads, Instagram, TikTok. You can also watch us on YouTube. Yes, you can. You can. See our beautiful faces. Um, You can also email us the podcast that wouldn't die at Gmail. Gmail. We are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere the finer podcasts are available. So don't forget to like, share, rate, and review. Won't you? Won't you please? Aaron, what is your social media situation? My media is this. I'm on a much of it. I'm on much media, but the one you need to be aware of is I am on the Instagram, the cult of Aaron. Join the cult. Etsy first dibs, Aaron Doherty. Let's go, people. Let's go, people! As you know, we like to include comments and questions of our fans across this social media world. And responding to our episode, <laughs> The Monster Squad, our friend Marty says, Wolfman got nards. I think that says it all. Don't you agree? I think it says enough. <laughs> I think it says enough. Next week, we're discussing the kevin bacon horror eerie psychological thriller stir of echoes i think i've literally seen stir of echoes 200 times possibly i've literally seen it once so there you it's, go it's coming off the sixth sense all the groovy ghoulies i like yeah. it we'll check it out you can watch stir of echoes on roku with ads Paramount Plus, free with Hoopla, Tubi with ads, Plex, it's free, Freebie with ads. So I'm hearing ads is what well, I'll, how couple, I'll be watching this. A couple of these are free with no ads, possibly. So check that out. Send in any favorite scenes, favorite quotes, comments, and questions. And we may talk about it on our show. Also, we should be uh, on another podcast coming up to discuss... Uh, stir of echoes so you have to look for that i'll keep i'll keep you posted so you get a All double right. dip of stir of echoes so enjoy that i like so, it when we go uh record ours after theirs so then we can take all their points and use it for ourselves that's like, not kevin i do. just come up with this this idea just right now have you ever considered this see that's Wrong. what we do Wrong. <laughs> it's a second bite of the apple. Okay. <laughs> it is it is a new taste sensation. Okay? I mean, what's the second bite of the apple? It's like somebody bit into it and then spit it out, and then you bite that. No, 
That's not it at all. At all. And frankly, I'm, I'm shocked and horrified. <laughs> so thank you very much and be well. Goodbye.